Good day. Um, today we're going to do lesson plan 16, term 2, grade 2. Um, the topic is addition and subtraction, um, building an up and breaking down 1 to 50. Um, it also links to worksheet 37 and 39 um, in the DBE book. I'm quickly going to show you that is 37 um, and then we got 39A and 39B. Um, going back to the lesson, um, this is then your link to the caps, so you can pause and have a look at it. Um, and then we're going to go to the resources in the dictionary. Resources here for you to plan and prepare. The dictionary, again, for you as parent and teacher, it's to know more about the mathematical language that your child needs to know um, when we do this lesson. Um, then what I want you to do is we're going to look at the daily routine, counting and mental mathematics. So you're going to pause at the daily routine and you're going to ask these questions like we did previously. Okay, so now we're going to do counting. So the number ranges between 0 and 100 and we're going to work in tens. So what we're going to do is we're first going to count in tens. Remember, um, it's the best first to count objects. So we do it concretely by using different concrete objects. Um, or then on the representative level where we use pictures. This again you can get from the SA Teacher eStore, our counting library. And after the learners counted in 10, 10, 20, 30, up to 100 and backwards, you're going to ask the learner to order the numbers. So what you can do is you give them 30, 50, 10. And I need to order it in the correct order. Um, you can also ask them to compare. Is 40 bigger than 50? Yes or no. Um, you can ask those type of questions. And then what you're going to do is um, you're going to give them um, just the numbers and ask them then to give you any three numbers between 40 and 50. It's not only when you're counting in tens. Then, then you got 50 and 90. Now you only give me numbers between 50 and 90 when we count in tens. And then what we do is we only give me numbers when you count in tens between 90 and 10. So what I want you to do here is to pause and then do the counting activity. Now we're going to do the mental maths activity. So the mental mathematics is, um, I prefer if you're going to do this orally. So you give them three numbers and they need to make them a number sentence. Now 8, 2 and 10, I just gave you one option. But they can say um, 8 plus 2 equals 10, putting the bigger number first. And they can say 10 minus 8 gives me 2 or 10 minus 2 gives me 8. So there's basically four options for each of them. They only need to give you one. I want you to pause and do the mental maths activity. Okay, now we're going to introduce the lesson. So first what you're going to do is you're going to give the child uh, seven counters. Now you're going to ask how many different ways or how many different combinations can you make to give you an answer of seven. So here, for instance, I'm showing you four plus three. We've got a two plus five. We've got a one plus a two plus a four. So see how many different combinations you can make. So you pause and you do this activity. Then the next activity, you're going to give the learner some number cards. You could just make your own cards with numbers on it. And or they can even do it. You give them pieces of paper and they write down these numbers on it. And then what they need to do is they need to give you all the combinations that will give you an answer of four. I want you to pause and do this activity. Then the last one, what you're going to do is first you're going to count, you're going to make drawings like counters, and then you're going to use numbers. So what you can do is for the child you drew draw four, and then what you do is the child can write draw there then a one and a three, or a two and a two, the combinations that will give you four. 
Then what you do is underneath that, you write down a 4 and you show then it's a 1 plus a 3. You can pause and do this activity. So in this activity, we're going to give the learners number lines 0 to 10. Um, please again, uh, make this drawing of a number line in front of your child so your child can see where the numbers are coming from, especially the 0. So what you're going to do then is you're going to make as many combinations that gives you an answer of 5 on the number lines. So the first one here, we can say 3 plus a 2, and then they can also pack out some stones, counters, anything that will represent that. So here what we have is a 3 plus a 2. Here we got a 1 plus a 4. You can ask them here, is it easier to say 1 plus 4 or 4 plus 1? Um, you can add questions like this. Uh, this example is a 1 plus a 2 plus 2. So you can give them empty number lines. Um, they can give you some. You make the hoops or what you do is you draw a number line draw the hoops and ask them to give you the sum and then every time end it off by packing out some counters to show the representative level. Um, this example that we have here again is 3 plus 1 plus 1 equals to 5. So this next activity is where I use a bead line. Now the bead line is um, it's a very long line um, because we're going up to 50 um, here you need, what I always suggest is to um, tear a piece of or uh, A4 into pieces or strips. So And then you stick it um, and you make a long piece of paper and you draw this. Um, and then what you're going to do is you show them this is 40. And then 40 plus the example here is 6. It will give us 46. We can see it. By using beads, we can use base 10 blocks, and then we can also show it with our flawed cards. Um, if you don't have these resources, try to keep it then on the number line um, and demonstrate it then with beads. Uh, make sure that that bead is between the 0 and 1. That is one bead. Don't put the bead on the 0 because we want to demonstrate this is one bead. From the 0 to 1, it's one beat. Then you're going to repeat the same activity using 41 um, up to 49. You can pause it and do the activity. Welcome back. So what we're going to do is we're going to look now again at the concrete representative at the abstract level. Um, and we're going to use different resources. So let's quickly look at the concrete level. So the concrete level, just as a revision, what you're going to do is you're going to pack out 40. So it's four rods plus, plus some units. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add the rods and the units. So just place some place value activities just to get them ready for this. Then um, you're going to write a number sentence on the board. 40 plus 4, and they need to show it with their base 10 blocks, and you say it's 44. Now, what you ask is remove all the units. So remove 4 cubes or blocks. And then how will we write this? We will write it then as 44 minus 4 equals 40. Now you can repeat it, you can pause it, and you can repeat it then with all these numbers. Here I just gave you examples of what we can do when we add and then every time when we subtract because children need to realize that um, subtraction and addition are inverse operations. Then when we go to the representative level, we're going to do similar activities, but this time what we do is we add the flawed cards, the place value cards. So we show it with the base 10 blocks and then the flawed cards. Remember, these two steps you can combine and do at the same time. So again, you're going to have 40, you're going to add 6. It gives me 46. And then we're going to ask them to remove the 6 units 
and then it will give me again 40. I want you to do it now with these numbers. Then we're going to go on to the problem solving. So the problem solving on the left hand side, what you can do is you can solve it by using base 10 blocks. When you're going to the representative level, you can you, uh, solve it by using base 10 and flood card or place value cards. And then lastly, uh, maybe the child is ready and they can only do it on the abstract level, like the example here. So you can pause and you do the problem. Remember in the problem to highlight the numbers, who are the characters, what um, operation are we going to use, are we going to add, or are we going to subtract, or are we going to do both. Then we're going to go to the worksheet. So this is the worksheet. I'm just going to scroll through it. So they're going to complete then the worksheet. Then we're going to come to the consolidation section. And here, if, if you ticked all yeses, um, you will carry on with the next lesson. If you have some no's, you need to revisit, revise, or you need to contact us at Edsa Teacher for support. Mm -hmm.